Yo guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I am bringing you the Premier League 2020-2021 season. That was a lot of words, I didn't like that. <laughs> but yes, I'm giving you the table prediction today. Before I get started, I do want to say a massive thank you. My goal when I started this channel like three or four months ago was to hit 30 subscribers by the end of the year. I feel like that's that, that would have already beat my best try because obviously I've had YouTube channels before, it just didn't work out. I've never really committed to it like I have this one. So I thought 30 subscribers in the year, that would be amazing. You guys have done a mad one, okay? 63 subscribers at the time of recording, about half nine on the Friday morning. Absolutely incredible. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, means the world. Now, in this video, I'm probably going to half that back down to 30, but I'm going to wind some of you up, okay? Let me explain. My predictions are based on what I know about football, which you might know a lot more about me, so I apologise if I get some stuff wrong. Um, but like, like, it's in the title. It's a prediction. My opinion is going to be different to yours. Let me know down below where you think I've gone wrong and why. Don't just start, oh, you're this, you're that. You put blank here and blank there. Let me know why I'm wrong and let me know why you think you're right, okay? Let's have a discussion down there, okay? But before we get into the video, make sure you guys do drop a like down below. You're down there anyway, so you may as well just subscribe. Um, it means the world and hit the bell to start to have more future uploads, including an unboxing video. You can imagine what it is. It was meant to get here yesterday, but it got delayed, hence why no upload. But it's coming in soon. So stay tuned for that. Hit the bell. Now, oh, I hope you can't hear any building work. So I just looked out. There's some building going across the street right now. So apologies if you can hear any drills or not. If not, then it's all right. But we're going to get straight into this. So if I'm going to move over here, if I've done this right, I'm going to put sections here, right, in a second. I'm going to do relegation three. I'm going to do the mid table. So I'm going to do about 17th to about 7th, a big chunk. And then I'm going to do the top six. And then I will also do the top goal scorer, top assister, player of the season, breakout player. And... We'll see how it goes. But first up, the bottom three in the Premier League is going to be, boom, if it's here, I hope it's here. Bottom three, Fulham, West Brom and Crystal Palace. Let me explain. So, Fulham and West Brom, these two could finish either position. From what last time I saw, Fulham have made some decent signings. They've got that Areola, the old PSG and Real Madrid goalkeeper. Um, that's a decent signing for him. I think it's on loan with an option to buy. That's decent for him. Um, I don't know huge loads of other business they've done. I know they got that Tete from Lyon, which is another decent signing, to be fair. like He's touted as a decent Dutch right back, I'm pretty sure. Um, but I don't know. I feel like they got Mitrovic as well. Um, Carney or Kearney, how are you going to say his name? Sorry. They've got decent players. I just don't think it's enough. I feel like Fulham... As well as West Brom, West Brom, sorry. <laughs> okay, I don't, I'm going to wind some people up by saying this. They're an amazing championship team. They're a mediocre Premier League team. I feel like they're just those yo-yos. Don't get me wrong, Fulham have had their great moments in the Prem where they've stayed up here for a couple of years, like a decent couple of years, but then gone down. West Brom especially, I, like, I, like I said, these two could be either side, like Fulham bottom, West Brom bottom. And then the other one above them. But these two I'm going to say at the bottom. Obviously West Brom as well. They've got some decent players. That Pereira they've got. Um, they're making some decent signs. But then they've got. They need to sign a striker. I could be missing someone here. But Robson Carnu up front. Hmm. I'm not sure about it. They Like I said. They do have some decent strike. Um, um, players. Sorry. I don't know what happened there. But um, yeah. They do have some decent players. And the more I think about it now. I reckon West Brom will finish bottom and Fulham above them. I feel like Fulham are probably better. But no, I'm committing to what I said. Fulham 20th, West Brom 19th and Crystal Palace 18th. Here's where it might get a bit sketchy. So, at the time of recording, he is still there. But it looks like Crystal Palace could be losing Wilfred Zaha. If they keep Zaha, I don't reckon they'll go down. If they lose Zaha... Yes, they've got some decent other players, and it looks like they've got Batshuayi on loan for a season, which is huge for them. I just don't think they're good enough. They've escaped it so many times in the past couple of years, purely because you've had Zaha being the quality he is, and you've had people like Townsend, Milivojevic, um, Ayu, 
Um, you get the point. <laughs> Having decent seasons, but they've lost some players. Zaha, if he goes, it's massive for him. Like, yes, he he's not exactly scored the most goals for him last year. I think Ayu got like five more goals in him or something. But what he brings to that team, the confidence he brings, like if he does a little bit of skill, that lifts the whole of Selhurst Park. And I know there's no fans in the stadium yet, but they'll miss that so much. And I do believe they will go down without him. Like I said, if you disagree, I feel like the Fulham West Brom, most people's predictions, they'll put them in the bottom or at least thereabouts. But Crystal Palace, I feel like not as many people will put there. So if you do disagree, let me know down below. Now, here... I'm going to put my 17th to 7th team. So a huge chunk, if I can remember in what order I've put it in, because I'm doing this from memory here. So 17th place, I've put West Ham United. I was so tempted to put them in relegation zone. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Let me explain why. They've got quality players. Felipe Anderson, Lanzini, Fornells, um, Bowen, um, Halland, Mark Noble's decent. Declan Rice, I'm not a fan of, but he's decent. You've got Fabianski, Diop. You've got you've got a good team there, right? That's what I'm getting at. Like on another day, if you added a couple more players, that could be Europa League level. There, it's just the feel around the club. It's like you saw when they signed, sold that um, what's his name, Dianga, Dian, that young kid. You know who I mean. Everyone went into a meltdown. It just feels like the way the club is being run by them right now. It's so they're about to blow up in their face. I just got a really bad feeling. They, I don't reckon they'll go down. I know there's an old saying, oh, too good to go down, obviously, Man United when they got relegated, but I don't know. I feel like they'll be there They'll be there around that time, but they'll just about stay safe. I feel like they, pretty much like this year, it's just whether or not they're just above or not. But I'm going to go 17th for West Ham. Uh, I think if I've, if I've remembered this right, I think 16th, I've put Aston Villa. I'll explain why again. If they keep Jack Grealish, which it looks like they will, they're pricing everyone out of a move. Jack Grealish is going to help them. They've got a John McGinn. They've got a Trezor Gay, who I think is okay. They've signed decent. They've obviously got, what's his name, um, from Brentford. Ollie Watkins, that's the one. 28 million Ollie Watkins. He's a decent striker. I'm... Oh, okay, I'm not counting him out already. He's not Premier League proven, that's what I'm getting at. They signed him from the championship. He, he was flying for Brentford, a part of that BMW with um, Ben Rama. I don't know, though. It's like... I hope he does well. He's young-ish, English, and I don't mind Aston Villa. And I do feel like they could have a front three of, what, Watkins on the right, um, Grealish on the left, and maybe Wesley up front. I think that's a decent strike force, to be fair. And that could... They could have a decent season. However, Dean Smith, I don't rate. He's decent. He just about kept them up last year. But then you also got to think, if there wasn't that goal line decision between Sheffield United and Aston Villa that first game back, they're down and Bournemouth are up. So little margins like that. Then, yeah, it's, it's, it's all mad. It's all mad. But I reckon they'll have enough to stay up. Now, I can't remember roughly where I put them. Where have I put everyone? I think 15th, I put Brighton and Hove Albion. I could be wrong on that, but you see the table here. I'm just going to talk through them all. Um, Brighton, they've signed well, I think. Adam Lallana, he's getting on, but I feel like he's a decent enough player. They've got Ben White permanently back from loan from Leeds. Decent centre-back. And obviously they've got just decent players up front. Mope, O'Connelly, I think he's all right. Um, you've obviously got, what's his name, Trossard, who reminds... He's not as good as Hazard. He reminds me of a young-ish Eden Hazard, where, the way he dribbles up here for... And he's Belgium and the left winger, so it makes sense really, doesn't it? They've got decent players, obviously. Losing Aaron Moy, who I only heard about this the other day. Losing Aaron Moy to China, was it? Could be a big loss for him. But they do have other midfielders. McAllister, um, Gross, um, Proper, Bis Bisuma, I think that's how you say it. But yeah, they've got a decent team. And I reckon Graham Potter, he's a good manager. Like, I do rate Graham Potter. What he did with that Ukrainian team, I think, was class. And he's done it at Brighton as well. Not comfortably, but he kept Brighton up with a good couple of games left. So, or at least got him out of the conversation. Or the favourites anyway. And I just think he'll do it again and I reckon they'll have a decent season. Um, I can't remember this rough table. I think it was Southampton. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'll just talk through this group. You can see it. 
But Southampton, I also think, Southampton, they're weird, right? They lost 9-0 to Leicester last season, and it's like, ever since then, Hassan Hattel just, Hassan Hutel, sorry, just absolutely banged it. Like, the rest of the season, Danny Ings was on fire, Ward Prowse was on fire. They just had a class team. Even Shea Adams scored a goal against City, granted it was at the end, but they had a good, they had a good season for them. I don't reckon Ings is going to repeat the season he had. He nearly got golden boot. He's a good striker. I can't see him getting more than 20 again. I hope I'm proved wrong for England's sake, but I can't see it. Um, but I do reckon Southampton will be that rough mid-table. Obviously, you've got Leeds around the 12th, 13th mark. Um, they've bought well. Rodrigo from Valencia is huge. They're linked to Draxler as well. They're getting some decent signings through the door. And Bielsa... I feel like it's going to be quite similar to what happened with Sheffield, who you can also see here in 10th. I feel like it will be similar to Sheffield, where they're bringing that new style of football that not many people would have seen. However, it is quite intense. And you see it a lot with Leeds, not even just under Bielsa. They do trail off at the end of the season quite a lot. And the style of football that Bielsa does want to play, that high-press, fluid football, I do feel like that's going to wear off because, yes, there's less games than in the Championship, but a Premier League game is a lot more intense than a Championship game. I think, if I'm wrong, I apologise, but I think that. And that's not saying the Championship's bad. I would argue it's the most competitive league in the world. But, um, yeah, I feel like they will drop off, finish around the 12th, 13th mark. But, yeah, um, Burnley as well. I reckon they'll finish just stands where they normally do, between the 10th, 15th mark. They're defensively sound. James Tarkowski is looking like he might be leaving though. So if he goes, that could be a big miss for him. They do have um, some decent players, like obviously Ashley Barnes and um, Chris Wood. They're not world-class strikers, but together they just seem to do amazing. So <laughs> you keep doing you. Um, I, I think they're just, a, they're just a decent team, aren't they? They'll never, they got in the Europa League that one year, but they'll never push for a top spot. And I don't reckon they'll get relegated. Sean Dyche is just a good manager. He's nothing special, but he's just he does the job. So Burnley, I reckon it easily be safe. This is the top 10. I do remember why I put all of these. So I can actually properly talk about these. If I missed anyone in that 17th to 10th, like 11th spot, I apologise. No offence. I've just forgot to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, 10th place, Sheffield United, which is an amazing season. I do feel like, let me explain, Chris Wilder could be at risk of being sacked. I'll explain why. They had such a good season last year. There was like three or four games off finishing in Champions League spot yeah, at our expense. However, similar to what happened with Ranieri at Leicester. Leicester won the Premier League. And then Leicester finished like, what, 7th or 8th or 9th or something like that? Roughly this position. We're up them now pretty much. And they sacked Ranieri because they thought Leicester was just going to win the league every year now. Chris Wilder might finish like closer to the re relegation in Europe. And they will look at that as a bad season. That's not a bad season. Everyone touted them as, including myself, finishing rock bottom last season. And they just smashed it, to be honest. 10th place for Sheffield is an amazing season. I'm pretty sure that's where they finished this year. And I reckon if they do the same, that's amazing. Um, but yeah. Now, 9th place. I was tr tricky with this. If I've done it right, I think I've put... I don't know if i put Everton or Leicester. Either way, I'll just talk to them both. Everton and Leicester. It could be either way. I think I've put Leicester in ninth. If not, I apologise. You see what I mean to say. Leicester lost some players. Ben Chilwell's gone. Can Vardy continue this run of form that he keeps somehow keep doing? Inianacho's not really good enough, in my opinion. Madison's doing sick. Um, Pereira's class, can they stay fit? Ndidi's doing good. Tillemans doing good. It's just the depth they don't have. Like, they've got, in terms of starting eleven. They've got a good team. The depth they don't have. One injury to Vardy. I don't know. And I just feel like they're, they're going to drop off. Brendan Rodgers is a great manager. Is he a manager to get him over that finishing line? Push him higher up the table? I'm not sure. But I'm going to put Leicester in ninth. I hope I've put that right here. If not, apologies. But Leicester in ninth. And I just reckon that's a fair enough statement. Everton I'm excited for. I was tempted to put Everton higher in the top six. I don't reckon they'll break into the top six. But I'm going to put Everton up here. The way they've bought... Uh, Everton could play a 4-3-1-2, right? Hear me out. Pickford in goal. Holgate and Keane. Ke um, 
Kenny. Coleman, Digne, a midfield three of Gomez, um, Decore and Allen. What? <laughs> In front of them, James Rodriguez, a front two of Richarlison and um, Calvert-Lewin, with Carlo Ancelotti as your manager. That's insane. Everton, Merseyside's on a mad one. It's the, it's the Ancelotti effect. I was so tempted to put them in the top six, but I'm not going to do that. I don't reckon they'll have enough, and it could be similar to... Like, on paper, they've got an incre like, incredible team, easily. You could argue it's better than some top six teams. Maybe not. But um, it, if whether they gel... If they gel, they could push for the top six. If not, then they won't. But I am going to stick with them, yeah. Wolverhampton Wanderers. <sighs> I don't know. It's just I got this feeling. I don't know what it is. They've not really lost anyone huge. I could be wrong in saying that. They've not really lost anyone huge. I just don't feel like they're going to keep going. I don't. I reckon a similar position to where they finished this year. About the 7th, 8th mark. I think that's fair enough. Not much to say about Walsh, to be honest. I just don't think they're going to have a great season. Although 6th, not 6th, sorry, 7th or 8th, I would say is a good season for Wolves, in my opinion. They're a great team, but they're not top 14 yet. Now, this is the interesting part. You're going to see exactly who I've put at the top straight away. So, spoiler alert, in 3, 2, 1, the top 6. There's a lot to talk about here, right? So, we're going to go start off. 6th place. Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah, I've put Arsenal above Spurs. Tottenham, Mourinho, Mourinho is gone before Christmas. I'm telling you now. Clip this up if I'm wrong. 1st of January 2021. Jose Mourinho will not be in charge of Spurs. He is about to have an absolute <laughs> amazing ex explosion with Daniel Levy. Okay, He's gone. Hoiberg, Joe Hart. Matt Doherty's an okay signing. But does that not scream of Lee Grant... Fred and Dallow. Dallow and Doherty. Okay. Hoiberg, Fred. Lee Grant, Joe Hart. <laughs> I'm just saying, he is not here by Christmas and Spurs fans are going to come at me. I like Spurs. I've got no reason to not like Spurs, really. Arsenal, they're, they're signing okay. Williams, not great. Like, he's okay, but yeah. That Gabriel centre-back guy is okay. They might get Ceballos back as well. I, I don't know. I just feel like Arsenal, the way they performed near the end of the season wasn't great. But FA Cup win as well, that could boost them. Charity Shield win or Community Shield, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. I just got a feeling Arsenal's going to do it against Spurs. And sorry, St. Tottenham stays back. <laughs> I apologise for them guys, but oh, that's my prediction. The top four, Chelsea in fourth, Man United in third, Liverpool in second and Manchester City in first. Chelsea have signed so many class players, Werner, Ziyech, they've got a front three of Werner, Ziyech, Pulisic, Havertz behind, oh that's insane, that, that is insane, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's mad, it's mad. I just think it could be on a higher scale, Fulham, when they were last in the Prem, they signed so many players. Seri, like, 15 players, but they just didn't gel. If Chelsea get a goalkeeper, I reckon they could be all right. I don't know. That's my thinking face. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to say Chelsea in fourth. Frank Lampard puts a cap on where that team can go. I know that Solskjaer's not exactly Pep Guardiola. But Frank Lampard, in my opinion, limits Chelsea. Chelsea's got a great squad. If you give that squad to Guardiola, they would win like Premier League easy, in my opinion. There's still weaknesses, like I said, goalkeeper. You could argue the defence. Thiago Silva is a bit of a risk. Saar might not be there yet. And you could say Rudiger and um, Zuma aren't exactly the greatest. And Asby's getting a bit older. Ben Chilwell's alright. I would have liked him in so I'm not going to slag him off really, but... Yeah, he's he's it's it's mad, it's mad. I don't know. I feel like Chelsea signing could either push them right to the top or not or just not any progress at all. They've definitely upgraded their team. A fair play to them, like <coughs> clap for them. However, I don't see it. I feel like it could be a case of two 
much too soon. And I've just got a feeling they'll finish fourth. Man United. Okay, I want to explain because I've seen some people talk about we could finish above Liverpool. And I don't think we will. I feel like I want to big us up, but I don't know. I feel like if we can get Jaden Sancho over the door, a left back or a centre half, then that means we've got Van der Beek, Jaden Sancho and a defender. That's an amazing window. If we can get Jaden Sancho, we'll push Liverpool close. Man City is going to win the league. They've, if they can get the Koulibaly over the line, they've signed well. Ake's came in as a rotation, I guess. If they can get Koulibaly as well, that's huge. I know they've lost Sane, they've lost Silva, but it's fine. They've still got Sterling to go there. They've got Bernardo Silva. They've, their team's a joke. I feel like Guardiola's going to do this season. He'll win the league. They'll try to go for the Champions League, but I don't reckon they'll do that. But City will win the league. Liverpool, past two seasons, 98 points. Um, I don't know how many finished on this year. 99? I can't remember exactly, but I know they didn't get 100. <laughs> um, but yeah, Liverpool have had two incredible high standard seasons. And this is the first time they've won the league. Premier League, sorry. They don't know how to defend it. <laughs> I know it's like, oh, I'll just do the same as you did last year. It's not that imp It's the mentality. That's what Ferguson was good at. Um, I don't want to bring it back to Ferguson, just living in the past, but it's true. Fergie got that mentality into people. We won the league. Okay, this, you can have like this night of partying. Now you go and defend it. Work hard from this point and defend it. Whereas it looks like Liverpool, they've won the league. I know it's their first one, but all summer celebrating. Training. Oh yeah, we won the league last year. Okay, now... Now the season's just started against Leeds. Now we can start defending it. They haven't, I don't know, and they haven't got any business over the line. They've been linked to Thiago. If they can get Thiago in, that's huge. They were linked to Werner. If they got him in, that would have been huge. They have been linked to Sancho. If they got him in, then if they got all three of them, they would have won the league. Incredible, with, like, including with what they've already got. But they don't. And I reckon they, they've not bought at all, really, have they? I don't think they've bought anyone. I could be wrong. If I am, I'm sorry. I reckon Liverpool are going to massively drop off. They'll still be there and thereabouts. But the only reason I'm not putting Man United in second and Liverpool third is because I don't know if we'll get Jadon Sancho. If we get Sancho, I back us. But if we're not, we won't. But in third place, we've got obviously Van der Beek coming in. He's going to be a rotation player. People are coming in saying Van der Beek, Pogba and Bruno. If you didn't see my video about him, go check it out. But that's not bad. It's still. We'll play Matic. Bruno and Pogba, and maybe against teams like Burnley, or not Burnley, sorry, Fulham, then we will play those three just to try and get the goals. But that is my predicted table. Um, I'll try to fit all three things in here so you can see it all. Relegation, middle, top. Um, actually, no, let me go through top goal scorers as well quick. Top goal scorer, rapid fire. Um... Abamyang. Abamyang's gonna finish top goal scorer. Heard it here first. Abamyang or Mane? No, pause. Sadio Mane is gonna get top goal scorer. Top assister is gonna be. You know what I'm throwing out there? Bruno Fernandez is gonna get top assister. Clean sheets. I'm gonna say Edison and player of the year would be. Kevin De Bruyne again, two years running. But we'll find out. Let me know down below anything I've got wrong in here um, and what you think you would have chosen. Stay tuned. Unbox perfect time for camera to die. Unboxing coming soon. Um, stay tuned for that. Smash the like if you enjoyed this. Subscribe if you're new and hit the bell to start to have all future uploads. Um, and yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed. Let me know down below. I'll see you next time. Peace.